Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my November 2022 reading wrap up. So I just have the one book to wrap up for you so far and that is Host by Peter James. Dane reads. This is a long old novel, it's got very small print, it's about 670 odd pages, uh, published in the early 90s and it's about kind of the concept of immortality using a, a mixture of like cryonics, freezing the body and um, like computer systems to power. I guess, to like download our brains to a computer kind of thing. So it's got bits of science fiction to it. Um, I'm not sure how well the, the uh, technological references have aged, to be honest. There's even a bit where James gets the conversions wrong between megabytes and gigabytes, which kind of annoyed me. Um, but yes, overall, it's still pretty cool. It's got some interesting ideas. It's got some cool like bits of gore as well, like somebody dies, gets frozen, then they have to chop their head off, and then their head gets... Um, exploded basically it gets thrown and because it's been frozen in liquid, ni liquid nitrogen it just explodes overall probably like a 3.5 out of 5 it was just all right um i'm glad i read it because i'm slowly working my way through all of peter james's stuff but i also think he's come a long way since he wrote this that is the pure in heart by susan hill so this is like a police procedural sort of thriller uh it's the second uh featuring detective chief inspector simon serrela um who I didn't really care for. It's To be honest, it's just a generic police procedural novel. I gave it like 3.5 out of 5, it was okay and fairly well written. It's just, it's not what Susan Hill does best and there are a lot of police procedural novels out there. So I don't think I would necessarily recommend this one over any others. Like I would just say go and read Peter James. If you want a ghost story, read uh, Susan Hill. If you want a police procedural, read Peter James. But yeah, 3.5 out of 5. All right, everybody, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Ghost, written by David Mitchell. So this book is the kind of book where it's difficult to follow at times. I actually wrote in my review, I think it might even be inspired a bit by Haruki Murakami. Um, not just because po mo well, po most of it is set in Japan. Um, but yeah, I think it just gave me those vibes. But yeah, it's uh, it's very much like Cloud Atlas, which David Mitchell also wrote in that, like, I think you'd have to read it a few times to be able to make sense of it all. And it kind of tasks you, the reader, with putting bits of it together and kind of developing your own understanding of it, which is fine. I quite look, like books like that. But yeah, overall, I, uh, I gave it like a, I don't know, 3.5 out of 5. Alright guys, just got two books to wrap up for you. The first is Le Chai Les Pigeons par Agatha Christie. So this is The Cat Amongst the Pigeons, but in French. Um, I have read the English one of these, but it has been a little while now. Um, bits of it did come back to me, to be fair. But I like the fact this is, it is like murder mystery, I guess. Cozy mystery, but with like espionage elements to it as well. Um, I enjoyed it. I could kind of just about follow the story. Um, so that was good. I get like a 3.5 out of 5. It's one of the more mediocre of Christie's books, but I am glad that I read it. And my edition is very cool because it has a little inscription written in French on the inside cover as well. And then I read Between Hell and Reason, Essays from the Resistance Newspaper Combat 1944 to 1947 by Albert Camus. Now this is interesting because it's of historical importance, both for the fact that it's like resistance writings during the Second World War, and the fact that it shows Camus' viewpoint on a lot of things like the, the death penalty um, evolving over time, you know? Um, and so that was kind of cool. And also, I don't know, it's just really interesting to see his take on it. I mean, the first essay in this is literally when the paper was able to be published, like, openly, because it's just after um, uh, Paris was retaken by the French. And yeah, just some really cool stuff. Um, it's not boring like you would expect an essay collection to be. I read this as my main book and I was expecting to have to switch it out as a bedtime read. Um, yeah, kind of philosophical. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of good stuff to it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Well, aren't you a lucky lot? Because I have another book to wrap up for you. Trying to figure out which way around it goes. This is the official Angry Birds side-splitting rib-tickling joke book by Egmont. Um, no author is credited. It's a joke book. It's not very funny. Um... What do you call a bunch of chickens playing hide and seek? Foul play. There we go. I gave it like a 3 out of 5. It was alright. It's uh, gimmicky, you know. But I picked it up cheap in a charity shop. So, what are you going to do? Alrighty folks, so I read Web by John Wyndham. Um, and this is basically, it's kind of a, almost like a desert island story, except not. It's a weird mix of like, sci-fi, historical fiction. Basically, this like, group, this colony of like, experimenters goes off to this island that has been previously owned by these like cannibal clan. It's not very good to be honest. It didn't really hold my attention throughout. Um, it's not Wyndham's best by a long shot. I just think it was a bit cliche at times and had some like 
uncomfortable stereotypes in it, but also it doesn't really have a plot. It's more like, it feels like a writing exercise rather than a full novel, so I don't really have anything else to tell you. I give it a 3 out of 5, but I am looking forward to I have a bunch more Wyndham up there that I'm looking forward to getting to. Hello folks, just the one book to wrap up for you today, that is Poems of Paris by Emily Fragos. So this is just one of those Everyman, uh, I think it's Everyman, Everyman's Library Pocket Poets series, um, where it's just got a bunch of poems about Paris. So some of them are written by French authors and translated into English, some are written by English authors, we have everyone from Verlaine to Bukowski, so we have a really interesting mix in there. Um, my only complaint was that the French ones, it just felt a bit for some of the translations where they've tried to maintain the rhyming scheme while also translating it into a different language I just don't think it worked particularly well but overall I did enjoy reading it and made me want to go back to Paris I gave Poems of Paris by Emily Fragos a 3.5 out of 5 and then we have Trouble with Lichen by John Wyndham don't mind the fact that half of this cover's missing I don't know what happened there I think that's how I got it I bought a job lot of these on eBay um, lit, uh, Lichen, I almost called the author Lichen. Wyndham has been hit and miss for me recently um, and this book was kind of the same. The concept is great, this, this people find um, like a Lichen which can prolong human lifespans to 200 years. The problem is there's only enough to treat like 3,000 people so it then kind of covers what that means for society, you know. Um, so yeah, the concept was good, the storyline not so much. It's one of those where the, and this is a challenge with being an author. You can have a really good concept, but then you need to tie it back to a story. Um, and the, people don't always execute on the story, you know. Um, and I don't think that really happened here. So the actual ideas, as I say, were great. The story was just, eh. I gave it like a week 3.5 out of 5. Alright everybody, just got the one book to wrap up for you today and that is The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thurgood. Um, I've seen him, he gave a, a, well he recorded a podcast at Wickham Arts Centre when I used to work there so that was quite cool. And uh, yeah, he lives in Marlowe, I used to work in Marlowe so that it was really interesting for me to read about a place I know. Um, and to see that represented in fiction. It's also just a really well written um, sort of mystery novel. I mean Thorogood is the guy who created Death in Paradise so you'd expect him to be able to write a decent mystery yarn you know. But yeah I really enjoyed it. I gave it a strong 4 out of 5 and I will be doing a full review of it soon. I encourage you to check that out and to pick up the book if you haven't already. It was good. Especially if you like mysteries. Alrighty folks just a few more books to wrap up for you. So I read Talking, no House Arrest by Alan Bennett, the author of Talking Heads. Uh, so this is a 4 out of 5. It's his Pandemic Diary so written uh, during 2020 and 2021. I've read some of Bennett's diaries in the past and sometimes they're a bit much, you know, it's, you are literally reading someone's journal and so it can kind of be slow going. Um, but I did enjoy reading this, I think it helped by the fact that it's uh, obviously very very topical but also like historically relevant. I think people will look back at this in sort of years to come. So that was good. Then I read Five Get Beach Body Ready by uh, Bruno Vincent, writing as Ina Blyton. Um, this is one of the famous five books for adults. Um, very funny, very kind of relevant to our society as well. We have a lot in here about the male gaze and the patriarchy and stuff like that. So interesting to read from that point of view. Overall, again, another four out of five. And then finally I read The Seeds of Time by John Wyndham. So this is a short story collection. Uh, it contains, let's have a look. It contains Chronoclasm, Time to Rest, Meteor, Survival, Paulie's Peepholes, Opposite Number, Pillar to Post, Dumb Martian, Compassion Circuit and Wildflower. And this for me was a 4 out of 5 and it was a big pleasure because I've read quite a lot of Wyndham recently and not all of it has hit the mark. So it was good to finally read one that kind of was, you know, showing that he isn't a cracking author and that I'm not crazy for wanting to read everything that he ever wrote. So yes, a 4 out of 5 for me. So there we have it, those are all of the books that I read in the month of November. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.